Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the General Assembly, Mr. Miroslav Lajcak. Good afternoon. We are halfway through the first day of uh, our high-level event on uh, peace building, sustaining peace and prevention of conflicts. I can say I'm very pleased uh, with the attention that the world leaders are paying to this event. And I can say that even at this moment, we have already met two goals that we have set before ourselves. The first one is to give greater visibility and greater prominence to the issue of peace and prevention of conflict because we have almost 50 member states represented uh, by their heads of state or head of government or ministers or vice ministers and this speaks for itself how important this issue for the member states is. The second outcome that we already uh, have achieved is uh, the agreement on a resolution that will be formally voted tomorrow but this re resolution makes sure that there will be follow-up there will be continuation of this process and we will uh, look into the best ways how to finance prevention and of course the Secretary General was asked to provide uh, additional reports uh, dealing with these issues. The third outcome is the one that I wish to see and it, that would mean many new ideas, uh, good models that can be implemented wide, more widely, uh, lessons learned from certain member states that can be taken over and implemented in other countries and I'm very much looking forward to the continuation of this discussion and also to the four interactive roundtables that we are starting this afternoon and will continue also in the morning tomorrow. Yes, Mr. President. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Beside this uh, huge attendance and the high-level meeting that you explain and the expected few outcomes, are you somehow afraid that the discussion will be too general without too many or uh, rather specifics on the certain issues? We have a Syria like a huge, huge problem now and that this will end up without any specific or so and we will have a just discussion. No, we will definitely have more than just a discussion, even though I have to stress that discussion is a good thing because discussion means that we are talking and we are listening to each other. But we are going to adopt the resolution. We are going to issue a st statement of the chair that will uh, summarize the most important uh, ideas that were presented here. We, uh, the, the heads of states who are here uh, are coming from the countries that have first-hand experience with either conflicts or prevention of conflicts. The Gambia, Colombia, uh, Central African Republic, Ireland, so the leaders presented their experience, their views, very concrete examples. Ministers who have spoken uh, so far are also speaking about very concrete examples. So uh, obviously this is a, a, a plenary debate, uh, but I'm, I am very pleased that we have a very concrete uh, and fact-based discussion. And as I said, we will have four roundtables which are designed to be interactive, which will uh, really uh, generate more dialogue and I'm sure that we will end up with a number of uh, very good uh, suggestions and ideas that can help uh, to improve the work of the United Nations system when it comes to peace and prevention of conflicts. Last question goes to Aaron. Please uh, tell us about uh, some of the models that you said, the good models that you plan to uh, implement in the future, and also how does uh, this whole uh, idea of peace building and sustaining peace mesh in with the SDGs? Well, first of all, we made it very clear that you cannot speak about peace uh, in separation from development and from human rights. So we, uh, this new approach to sustaining peace that was reflected in the Twins re resolutions adopted 2016 uh, expects and demands a comprehensive approach. So uh, obviously you cannot talk and think about meeting sustainable development goals in a situation when country or the region is in, in conflict. So therefore, the peace is a precondition, prerequisite for development and also for the respect of human rights. And the, one of the formal reasons for this meeting is the fact that it's, ta it's taking place two years after the resol first resolutions of, on sustaining peace were adopted. And it's also an opportunity for us to see how much has been achieved, how much the work of the United Nations has improved, has changed for better, what needs to be done for the future. So it's also a stock-taking exercise in a way. For example, in Myanmar, the General Assembly voted that the Secretary General should appoint an envoy 
that was in December. Now it's April. There's still no envoy. So I know that one of your issues is speed, to get involved in the conflict as early as possible. Given that it's been more than four months, what do you say as PGA to the lack of an envoy? It's not for me to answer these questions. Uh, I'm sure that procedure, procedures are taking place in the Secretariat, uh, but I'm not familiar with the details. I'm, 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 I'm late for the lunch. Uh, I'm, I'm really sorry. I really have to run because I'm five minutes late for the high level. I'll come back to you. Thank you very much.